Hello and welcome to another Tuesday Tip. I'm Pam Keselowskis and today we're going to be talking about special claims. When we talk about special claims, this is a device that allows owners to recoup losses from certain situations. You're going to look at special claims for unpaid rent, tenant damages, and vacancy losses during rent up and after rent up. After rent up is simply a normal vacancy during the life of your property. There are only certain properties that can make special claims. We are talking about Section 8 properties, 2028, 202 PRAX, and 811 PRAX. There are additional properties that can look at debt service claims, but we're not going to be talking about those today. We're going to be talking about the most common special claims that we have, which are vacancy loss and damages. There is a maximum amount that you can claim in a special claim. In PRAC properties, you're looking at 50% for a vacancy loss. And in a 2028 and the other properties, you're looking at 80% of contract rent for up to 60 days. For damages, you're looking at a maximum of one month's contract rent minus any security deposit and interest that you've withheld. The special claims process can be done online at the Navigate portal. So you're going to log into that portal, into the client portal, and you can fill out the special claims cover sheet and submit your documents in this portal. When you are looking at a special claim, you need to make sure that you have all the documents in place as part of that special claim. There is a checklist for special claims that you can find on the Navigate site that will tell you everything that you need to have with you or with the claim. If you don't have everything, that can result in some delays. With vacancy claims, the biggest thing that is going to cause a delay is your wait list. When you are submitting your wait list for a special claim, there are certain things you need to make sure that you have. You need to have at least the previous two to three move-ins. You need to have notes that explain any skipovers. Your wait list should be organized chronologically, so date of application, by unit size. So all of your one bedrooms, all of your two bedrooms arranged in order by application date. And you need to make sure that the move out has been submitted to tracks. So those are all the things that can cause delays in your vacancy claims. When you look at other special claims, unpaid rent and tenant damages, the big thing with unpaid rent is you need to make sure you have a copy of your resident ledger there and you need to have a copy of the demand letter. That means that before filing your special claim, you need to have sent a letter to your tenant explaining what they owe and what for. For damages, one of the biggest issues that we see is that people will be cleaning, claiming cleaning Cleaning in general is not claimable, even if it's excessive cleaning. If you had to bring in a hazmat crew or bring in, you know, a, an environmental company, depending on what's going on, that may be claimable. But in general, cleaning is not allowable for a special claim. You need to make sure when you're doing a special claim for damages that the invoices and the charge list matches what you build to the resident. So when you're going to make a special claim for damages, you need to make sure that you are first billing the resident for those damages. A couple of things to keep in mind about submitting your special claims. Special claims have a deadline. They need to be submitted within 180 days. That's not six months. It's 180 days. The other thing that most people are not aware of, especially when they're newer, is that special claims, the funding for those, comes out of your subsidy bank. So if you have been making a lot of your special claims, you want to pay a lot of attention towards the end of your contract to make sure you still have sufficient funds in that contract. When your contract is running low, you need to submit an application to HUD to get additional funding. So you just would rather be in a situation where you're being proactive about that than finding out you've used all your subsidy and then having to scramble. 
you can just keep an eye on that subsidy bank. And it's typically within the last couple of years that you want to look at that. The next thing I want to ask you is what would you like to see on our next Tuesday tips? You can let us know anything that you would like to see us cover by emailing us. You can email either me or Vicki. And our contact information should be up on your screens now. So you can email us and let us know what you'd like to see or what you'd like to see more of on Tuesday Tips.